Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about romances with 10 out of 10 romantic banter. I love bantering in romance books. I love bantering. I love bickering. I love it so much. This is my sixth great banter romance rec video. I'll leave all the other ones down below if you want more recommendations. You haven't checked those videos out yet. Please do if you want more recommendations. Um, but I have 10 more to give you all today. So let's get started. Kate and Willa definitely banter a lot in this book. Okay, this is Heartless by Elsie Silver, the second book in her Chestnut Spring series. Willa ends up becoming the nanny to Cade's youngest, Willa ends up becoming the nanny to Cade's young son. Um, and he works on this ranch. He's this ranch hand guy. Um, and it's really good. It's really good. Um, like their first meeting is just filled with banter because they end up meeting at a coffee shop and um, her purse spills and she apparently had a pair of panties in there and he tries to give them back to her and she's like, mm, how about you keep them? Finders keepers, you know? Um, and that's their first meeting. And he doesn't know that she's about to come over to his house to interview to become his nanny. She doesn't know that that's going to be her boss either. Um, so yeah, this one's so good. The way that they banter with each other just had me like kicking my feet and squealing. Mm, I love these two. If you want more of an enemies to lovers vibe, I have Battle Royal by Lucy Parker. These two characters ended up meeting on a baking show that's very similar to Great British Baking Show. He was the one of the judges and she was one of the contestants and one of the creations that she made kind of like exploded all over him. <laughs> Um, but after the show, she ended up getting like a lot of traction and was very successful where she now has her own bakery. Um, it's actually this like cute little one right here. And then across the street is his very like world famous bakery. Um, and she loves like color and sparkle and he is more like a plain Jane elegant type of baker. So they're very, very, very different. It's opposite the tract. And the two of them have to spend time together, even though they don't really want to, um, because they're both kind of competing for the spot to make the wedding cake for a royal family that just got engaged. So they're gonna kind of like compete with each other to see who can make the best cake for them. Um, and I love this one so much. The two of them are so attracted to each other, but they also can't stand each other. They can't stand each other because they're so opposite. He finds like her creations to be like way over the top and very childish. And she finds him to be too like stick up his butt, like stick straight. Like she's like, let loose, dude, like let loose. So I really love this one. If you want a fun one with like fantastic baking, I really recommend this one. Vicky Chambers Shakes It Up by Cherish Reed is one that I read last year. And this one has chronic illness representation, by the way. I think our heroine has hyperthyroidism, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and she needs more money for medical care. And so she's already a professor. Oh, the note is coming out. <laughs> Zay got me this book for my birthday. So <laughs> thanks Zay <laughs> a while ago, um, but the note was falling out. Um, but anyway, so she needs more money to pay for medical care. She's already a professor at the local college. She um, is like an online professor for this online writing course. Um, and she decides to get a job at a bar in her town. It's the bar that Diego, our hero, owns. And little does he know that the woman he just hired to work in his bar is also his writing professor. He decides to take a few writing courses um, through the college. He wants to get a college degree. And so they have this moment in here. They're like, I think I'm your student. And then they're like, but I'm also your boss. So it's like both of them are each other's bosses and each other's kind of like pupil in a sense. So they have a lot of bickering and bantering because Diego is more like the reserved, like quiet type. And um, Mickey is very loud and very passionate with her words. So I love both these characters. Another more animosity relationship is the co-op by Tara DeWitt. These characters had kind of like a fling a little bit in high school. I did not end amicably okay um but their respective grandmothers were best friends they even owned a house together and when their grandmothers passed they ended up kind of like in their will gifting their part of the house to their grandchildren the only way they can get this house though and then they want to sell it and sell it for a higher profit right to earn some money but the only way they can get the house is if they get married and so these two that cannot stand each other have to live in this house that they're remodeling together have to get married for convenience purposes and spend all this time together when they cannot stand each other okay but there's a fine line between love and hate okay because these two 
these two can't stop thinking about each other. Finding Jean Kelly by Tori Jean is another prime example of fantastic banter. Evie lives in Paris. She is American, um, but her, her and her grandmother always dreamed of going to Paris together, living in Paris and possibly opening up a bakery there. And so she's been living in Paris for I think a few years or a few months, if I'm not mistaken. And her best friend comes to visit her and brings along her childhood nemesis. And she's like, oh, why did you bring? did you bring him? Like, why is he here? Um, but I don't want to spoil it, but they end up having to fake date. These two don't get along whatsoever. So yeah, she thinks that he hates her, but it might be like the complete total opposite. Okay. Um, this has great endometriosis representation, its own voices for endo rep. And if you just love like the Paris setting with like a bunch of baking goodness, great chronic illness representation, I also recommend this book. A more holiday read. I love is The Mistletoe Motive by Chloe Liza. These two characters work at a small bookstore that is kind of going under and they kind of have this bet going on that um, whoever can sell the most books by Christmas has to um, stay at the bookshop. Like they get to stay and whoever sells the least amount like quits because the owners of this bookstore tell them like we might have to fire both of you because we don't like let both of you go because we don't have the budget so they come up with this plan right they have to spend more time together because of this they don't really get along as it is and now they have to spend more time together there's representation in here for autism which is own voices the heroine is autistic and the hero has type 1 diabetes so um you only read i think in the heroine's point of view so you don't really know what the hero is thinking um so you think this whole time that this hero hates her she thinks the hero hates her but it might be again like like finding june kelly the complete opposite if you want an alien romance i have the quarry master by amanda milo this one probably out of all the alien romances that i've ever read this one is the most filled with banter like banter galore in this one okay so the hero of the story he is this alien creature you see on the cover he is building the settlement for humans he's been hired to do it on this planet and he doesn't really like humans He's like, they're lazy. They want to sit down and take breaks all the time. They have no work ethic. They just keep on talking and talking and talking. I don't like humans. And then he meets our heroine who is new to the settlement and decides to help build this building, the settlement that the hero is working on. He finds her to be different than her kind. Um, she works so much harder. She's also an amputee. And he's like, she's even missing one arm. And she carries less stones than everyone else to like build this building made of stones right and she she collects more than everyone else like i admire her so much she's doing great a heroine just loves to poke at him make fun of him get under his skin flirt with him like and he's just this big grumpy alien dude like oh this one is so good i have three um historical romances to mention first is the princess and the rogue by kate bateman this is an anastasia retelling um, and the hero ends up meeting the heroine one day at a women's establishment, if you know what I mean. Um, but the heroine is just there to teach these women how to read. That is her job. But he thinks that she's there, like, to spend time with, right? And so he was not there for that purpose. He was there to investigate something. Um, he's like a detective of sorts. And he's like, wait a minute, you're the most stunning woman I've ever seen in my life. Like, I will pay anything to be with you. And she's like, uh, sorry. I don't work here. Um, and he's like, okay, well, I'll still pay you anything. You know, like, uh, you are stunning. Like, do you wanna, basically, he's like, do you wanna go out with me? And she's like, uh, no. But then they have this kiss. It baffles both of them, but she ends up running off. And ever since then, he's been trying to track her down and find her. It, it's really good. Okay, it's a great Anastasia retelling. Their banter is really funny and cute. Like he is so smitten over her. I love it. And then I also love Lady Ruthless by Scarlett Scott. It was one of my favorite books of last year. It was so good. This book starts out with our hero kidnapping our heroine. Okay. <laughs> so they obviously are not friends. The heroine thinks that the hero is responsible for her brother's death. And so she came up with this newspaper pamphlet article thing that is making its way through the ton where it's talking about the scandalous sins of Lord Sin. His name is Lord Sin. So she's writing about all these debauched, horrible, scandalous things that he's done. He's like killed people apparently in these articles, slept with why men's wives in here, like done all these things. He's now been ostracized from society. And he's like, I haven't done any of these things. What is going on? Um, so he ends up tracking down who's writing these things and ends up kidnapping her. And it's like, you've ruined my reputation. So you have to marry me instead because no one else will. Like, this is how you're gonna repay me is by marrying me. So um, I love this one. Enemies to lovers, hardcore, with like kind of like that lady whistle down from Bridgerton aspect. And the last one that I have is a recent read of mine. This is Yours Until Dawn by Teresa Medrios. And um, this is a Beauty in the Base retelling. The heroine gets hired to be the hero's nurse. He is recently blind. Um, he's not able to see and the heroine's going to be his nurse and kind of teach him how to function 
in his home and society um, without being able to see. But he is this, at first this big broody man who just hates everyone and hates the world. So she's kind of struggling on how to get under that prickly skin, right? I loved this one. It was really good. A great Beauty and the Beast retelling. But these two like bicker and banter because he does not want a nurse. He's like, I don't need a nurse. I don't need a nurse. And so he does everything to try and make her quit. And it's so funny. He has like, has like the dinner bell that he rings every like five seconds to have her come do something for him. Like it's really funny. And anyways, there you have it. Those were 10 romances with fantastic banter in them. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting anything else, you can leave me any dessert emoji in the comment section down below because I'm, I'm hankering for a sweet. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see you all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.